Hi YouTube, M6CB back again with another video. Uh, today I wanted to do um, something a little bit different again. Um, I've had a few questions about DMR specifically and, and obviously digital radio generally um, about how easy is it to get into. It seems quite confusing, a lot of people are struggling with the concept a little bit. Um, so this, I'm just going to do a bit of a beginner's guide on how to get into DMR. Uh, currently Retivis, who I've got a few of their radios, have a sale on at the moment. Um, they are doing the RT3S, which is a brilliant dual band FM as well as DMR radio, uh, for $65. Um, so links will be in the description. Uh, I've also done a, a review on the RT3S and a full programming guide on the RT3S. So it's a perfect radio uh, to, to purchase, especially at the price that it is at, at, at currently as filming. I think it's on for about another week or so now. Um, so I highly recommend that radio. But there's loads of DMR radios, they're all very much the same really. Um, so you can, I mean I've got a couple that I'll show you now, some different ones uh, and that I use a hotspot so I've had a few questions about um, do I use a DMR repeater, uh, do I use a hotspot. Uh, now with a, with a DMR uh, repeater they use two time slots usually um, so that you can have two conversations on the same repeater which is brilliant um, but obviously a lot of people can use a repeater, there's, there's a lot of traffic on there. Um, so me personally, I like to use the hotspot. Um, I did also did a, a, a video on how to build the hotspot that you see. We'll have a quick look in a minute and uh, have a look around it. So I did a full review on how to, uh, sorry, a full tutorial on how to build this uh, hotspot really, really cheaply as well. Uh, so it won't cost a lot. I did about 60 quid, something like that. Um, and I also did a, a full tutorial on my website. Links will be in the description. Um, I also show you how to update your uh, hotspot once you've got it and all set up. I use Pystar, completely free uh, uh, software. Um, so in a nutshell you have your Raspberry Pi. Um, so all it is is a Raspberry Pi computer uh, with an MMDVM board. I mean, I'll put some links in the description uh, and obviously if you have a look at my website I'll put the link in the description. Um, it'll, it lists everything you need to buy in the, in the website, so, so don't worry if I'm losing you. As I say, it's meant for a bit of a beginner's guide, so uh, some of you already probably know this, but there's a lot of people that don't. Um, so you just basically get a Raspberry Pi computer. Um, they're very inexpensive, probably about £15, £20, and then you need but what they call, well, there's different boards, but without confusing it, I'll just tell you what I use. I use an MMDVM board. I uh, can't remember what, it's, what it stands for now, but it's um, basically your MMDVM board slots on top of your Raspberry Pi. Uh, as you say, have a look at my uh, video that I did on that, uh, how to build it, and you'll see how easy it is. Um, and that just has an antenna on the top. So basically, your hotspot, as you can see there, is connected to the internet. Um, you can use Wi-Fi or use an Ethernet cable directly into your router. I prefer the hardwired route. Um, and then the MMDVM board receives and sends the radio signal to your handy. So you can walk anywhere around your house with your little handy, uh, talk into your handy, which then your MMDVM board receives the RF signal, which then puts it basically through the internet into the Brandmeister network, uh, which is just this, this, a few different networks I personally uh, like Brandmeister, we'll have a look at that as well, don't worry. Um, and it puts it through to the network, you come out over everybody's repeater, uh, everybody's hotspot on that uh, talk group. Um, so that's basically how it works and then they will talk back to their hotspot or repeater, it comes through the internet, through to your hotspot and then the, RF, the MMDVN M board sends the RF signal to your radio and that's basically it. Um, as I say, we'll do a quick look round the equipment and I'll basically show you uh, how you get your DMR ID. I mean, uh, obviously you've got your amateur radio license, uh, but to be able, when you transmit on uh, your RF from your um, radio into the network, if you don't have your DMR ID, uh, which uh, DMR mark, I think it used to be called, is it still? I'll double check, we'll have a look in a minute. Um, they issue you an ID, you send them a copy of your license, they validate that you're a you know, licensed amateur, they give you an ID, uh, and then when you're programming your radio, put the ID in there and then it'll identify you in the network. So basically that's what it is. So, without further ado, we'll have a look, quick look around the equipment and then uh, I'll jump on the computer, show you a couple of bits on there 
and uh, hopefully you find this video useful. So let's begin. So let's have a quick close up of the, the hotspot. So as I say, this is the one I built myself. Um, I did a full tutorial on this on the website as well as uh, a video on it. So uh, check the link in the description. Um, so yeah, it's it's very, very, very easy. Um, it's not complicated at all. It's actually um, the hardest bit is basically soldering these four wires uh, into the MMDVM board. That's the hardest part. So, uh, and you don't even need the screen. The screen's an option. Uh, you can, you basically um, log into this by via another computer. So obviously it's on the same network um, as your house Wi-Fi or your internet. So you just use another computer. You use an IP and you basically log into this uh, hotspot. So you don't even need the screen. Um, so that just that's just a, a good point to make. Um, in this case, there's, there's loads of different cases on, on eBay and stuff that you can use. Um, this is just one that I personally liked, um, basically because of the way it gives it full circulation of air and just the way I've designed it, you know, the way I've used it, it seems to work well for me. But as I say, there's loads of different ways. Some people put them in big boxes um, with the screen on the front of the box and make it like, make it look like a bit like a radio. Uh, you can do that as well. That's absolutely, that's brilliant as well. Um, so I've left it plugged in so you could see the screen. So hopefully it's coming through on the uh, on the on the display there. Now this screen is is called the Nextian uh, display. Um, you can basically buy these very inexpensively from China. So that's where I got mine from, sort of AliExpress, that kind of thing, eBay. Uh, it was about ten or fifteen pounds, if that. Um, and basically, when it comes, you it has like an SD card slot on the back of it. Um, and there's a, a Nexus, something called a Nextian editor that you can get on your computer, which is just a free editing uh, sort of programming, if you will, for the for the screen. Um, you can plug your screen into your, into your home computer and, and connect it that way. Uh, and there's loads of people that share these um, setups, so you don't have to de design this, as, as you see. I mean, I've added my own bits to it, but people share these layouts uh, quite readily on, on Facebook. I'll leave links in the description. Um, so people share these. Um, basically, you just in download the, the layout that someone's designed. Uh, they're obviously happy for people to use them. Uh, depending on your screen size, this is a 3.5 inch display. They do 2.5, they do they do 6 inch, they do all sorts. So you just get the right the design you like for the screen size you like, download it onto your computer, connect your screen to your computer or download this image onto a, an SD card and you basically put, to, put it on there. As I say, I've done, I've done a few, full tutorial on on how to build this so that's going to be a lot more detailed than this I'm just trying to show you basically uh, how it works this hotspot I can leave basically anywhere in my house um, on this little antenna that comes with the MMDVM board and I don't struggle for signal uh, anywhere in my house whatsoever uh, it puts out 10 milliwatts which is fully legal uh, for any licensed class foundation everything no problem at all um, so I'll just disconnect it now so we can have a bit of a closer look that's it so let's just plug that out of there, move those out of the way, let's just move that. So yeah, there we go. So basically if we tilt it down, you can see that this is just a Raspberry Pi 3. Um, they're very inexpensive, about 20 quid, um, and they have a, an SD card um, there. You can just see it tucked behind this uh, connector for the screen. They have an SD card slot on it and uh, you basically install the Pi Star software. Um, which is all on the tutorial, don't worry. Uh, you basically install the Pi Star software, um, which basically tells the Raspberry Pi what it's supposed to be doing. 
um, you've got the MMDVM board on the top and it just pushes in on the pins there so you don't even need to do any soldering or anything the MMDVM literally just pushes straight on top of the Raspberry Pi and that's it and then you've got the little antenna there you can see um, <laughs> don't mind all the glue I've got like a, a connector um, obviously I didn't want the antenna going straight sort of what would be out this way I wanted a, a 90 degree on it so obviously it's pointing upwards um, but that's the MMDVM on there um, Ethernet port on on the Raspberry Pi, so I like to personally hardwire it into my uh, internet. But you can use Wi-Fi. Um, you can tether this to your mobile phone. So if your mobile phone has Wi-Fi tethering on it, you can um, basically go into your. As I said, you go into your computer, um, log into this Raspberry Pi, enter your Wi-Fi details into it. Uh, you have to connect it by Ethernet first to be able to uh, obviously program your Wi-Fi details. Uh, but put your phone details in there, you have your Wi-Fi hotspot um, basically take this out with you it just takes a, a micro SD power uh, supply um, so that's just any old phone uh, charger, I just use a phone nothing fancy, doesn't need any uh, special power requirements, that's all it needs so take this out in your car, take this in your caravan give it power, wait for it to boot up after a couple of minutes and then you've got your hotspot, you've got your own private repeater basically uh, anywhere you want to go, um, completely private to you, access whenever you want it, uh, no issues whatsoever. So yeah, we'll have a look at some of the radios now. So this is the RT84, I've done a full review on this on the website as well as the uh, on, on YouTube, so check that out, I'll put obviously links in the description. But this is a brilliant um, radio for a hotspot, in fact I've, I've named this the, the perfect hotspot radio. Um, as the DMR mark database at the moment is around 125,000 uh, DMR IDs, so obviously 125,000 amateurs, if you will, um, that you can um, in the database, which you can download. Uh, it's, it's in like an Excel spreadsheet, um, and basically you can input the whole database into these radios so that when in a, in a sort of roundabout fashion without confusing things basically all it means it sounds complicated but it really isn't um, when when somebody transmits in the network like I said on the intro when you press your transmit button uh, you have to have your DMR ID for it to the system to recognize that you're a licensed amateur um, so obviously that ID everybody's ID is linked to their call sign so when other people transmit you can get their um, details on your screen so it'll tell you their uh, call sign and their name and so and their location sometimes and um, so that's really good so this can at the moment hold the entire database within it so um, I'll show you the Aliens H or Aliens HD one in a moment um, that has a hundred thousand maximum contacts in that radio so at the, currently uh, the full database will not go on that radio uh, which is a bit of a shame um, but you know it's, it is a superior radio to this in, in a lot of other ways uh, but for a hotspot I think this is really good you could probably put a shorter antenna on it uh, just leave it on the low power I think this is sort of one watt low power so perfect for a hotspot the hotspot puts out uh, 10 milliwatts uh, and this will put out one watt back so you, it, it, you know your battery will last forever really a uh, really good speaker on it uh, this this radio uh, currently is about seventy dollars eighty dollars um, as I said on the intro the RT3S is currently on sale at the moment um, and that's I think sixty five dollars uh, link will be in the description where you can get that but they're always having a sale so there's always something there's always some deal to have uh, somewhere you could even get a, a second hand Titera MD380 which was another really popular uh, radio. I've done a review on that as well on YouTube I'll put the links in the description but that's another great radio as well um, and that can be purchased really cheap second hand now uh, probably for like 40 50 quid probably um, so anyway that's the RT3 uh, sorry this is the RT84 this is the Aliens HD1 now this is my favorite by far uh, DMR radio that, you, that uh, I've ever seen uh, or ever owned this is a brilliant radio. As I said in the RT84, um, this only has 100,000 DMR contact um, data storage inside. So you can fit 100,000 IDs in the current database is 125,000. So you're gonna have to be a bit selective on uh, the IDs if, you, if you're bothered about having them show up on the display. As I say, it's not essential whatsoever. Uh, this is also a dual band FM and DMR radio. And this one will do 10 watts. 
um, full power which is which is really good um, also you can change the boot logo so when I turn it on you can see the British flag with M6EB on it you can make your own uh, in the programming software for this radio uh, as I say I've done a full review on this radio on my website as well as a video so uh, check the links in the description it also shows you how to do that I've, I've also explained that um, but yeah this is a brilliant radio really really hard wearing really durable uh, I've had this about a year now uh, and it's literally indestructible you could you could you know you could throw it out your three-story building uh, roll over it a few times with a truck and uh, you'll still be good to go it's, it's literally in, indestructible it's got a three and a half thousand uh, milliamp hour battery on it as well I think so it lasts forever it's re really really is a nice radio uh, and I've got the speaker mic for this as well uh, this is a waterproof radio uh, so if you go camping fishing that kind of thing this might be uh, a good radio to choose plus obviously with its 10 watts um, if you're using a DMR repeater as opposed to a hotspot then you, the extra power might be it might, might be useful for you there so yeah there, there's a look at the radios um, so we'll have a look on the computer now and I'll show you a couple of little bits on there of how to get your DMR ID that kind of thing um, so hopefully we, you know at least you've got an idea of some of the equipment that we use on DMR as I say there's loads of different radios as long as it's tier 2 moto turbo compatible um, most of them are then, you, then you're not going to have a problem so uh, yeah let's have a look on the computer right we're going to have a look on the computer now uh, so hopefully we can get a little bit more of an understanding uh, as I say a lot of you might already know all this information um, so you can just obviously uh, move past it uh, but basically if you're wanting to get into DMR you will need a DMR ID um, every, every, you've obviously got your amateur radio license um, but you need to get your ID which is just for this DMR uh, network um, so that you can get into the, system, into the network without this DMR ID it won't know who you are and it's not identified with you uh, and it won't let you in basically so that's the first thing you want to do if you're wanting to get into DMR get your ID before you do anything else because it'll take a good couple of days to come uh, so here I've, I've just googled how to get a DMR ID um, it's giving you a brief idea here but obviously uh, I've just gone to this link uh, there and it basically says to obtain a radio ID in the EU and UK and Africa please visit here so I've just clicked um, and then obviously at the top we've got register um, so blah 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 Da, 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 da. you agree to the terms at the bottom register your account it's going to ask you for your call sign to obviously put your call sign in uh, go through the motions you're probably going to have to upload your digital copy of your license um, send them that however I can't remember. I mean I've had my idea a long while now so I'm not sure exactly how they do it but they're going to want a copy of your license uh, which is all legit you don't have to worry there's nothing to worry about they just need to uh, obviously uh, validate that you are a licensed radio amateur now you can be a foundation holder it doesn't it does not matter one bit at any license I think from as, as I'm pretty sure is is allowed a, a DMR ID um, so obviously that's going to take a couple of days to come so then the next port of call would be probably choosing uh, your radio um, now obviously I've had quite a few Retivis radios and the, the reasoning behind this video was because I was aware that Retivis had this sale on the RT3S now I did review that radio uh, I think I've got it up here so yeah I did review that radio I did a written review and a YouTube video review of that and I did a full programming guide a really detailed programming guide on YouTube um, I mean all DMR radios are pretty much the same uh, but I thought I, I thought oh you know if, if they're offering this sale I think you can get this radio which is a dual band FM and DMR so it's not just a DMR handy for $65 which is insane uh, this radio is a fantastic radio so uh, you know if you're thinking about getting into the hobby you, you're gonna look at $65 uh, for, your, for your radio and that's if you want a brand new one um, you can get sort of the Titera MD380 which is fair old now you know it's a couple of years old uh, you probably can get one of those on uh, eBay second hand for, for maybe £40 um, so that's always something to look out for and obviously as I said earlier I've, uh, I've done a full written review as you can see on the top of this website here hotspot build um, I've done a full written uh, tutorial and YouTube video on how I built this 
Um, it looks scary if you've never seen one before, <laughs> you know, you're thinking, oh my god, I can't do that. It's really, really easy, honestly, it really is. Um, I mean, if I can do it, anyone can do it, that's a fact. Um, so yeah, take a look at that. Um, so yeah, basically I've got my radio, uh, so let's go with the RT84. Uh, we're going to need a code plug. Now you're probably thinking, uh, well, what's a code plug? Um, you probably heard the term thrown about a bit. Uh, and it really is straightforward, it's not a scary thing at all. <laughs> all a code plug is, if you think of it as um, this is Microsoft Word, it's not obviously, but just think of this as Microsoft Word, uh, and all this information is the document and we're saving it, and when it saves it, the format it's saving it in is a code plug. That's as, that's as simple as term as I can. Um, obviously we've got the, the Ken, on this particular radio, we've got the Kenwood style connector. Uh, so I've got the, the cable there. Uh, I just plugged it in uh, and then I, I, I did read from radio there because obviously I've already programmed this. Um, you can fill all this information out and build your code plug, keep saving it and it'll just be a, a file on your computer somewhere and you can go in as many times as you want, edit it, tweak it, go back, put it on the radio so you plug it back in, go to, to write to radio, keep doing it till it works. You, you're really not going to break it really. Uh, you you kind of can do you know as long as you don't go like obviously in the general settings like you look at this and you might think oh my uh, oh my goodness you know all this information just leave it yeah I don't mess with any of it all the most important thing is to put your DMR ID in there uh, obviously that's my ID you'll have a different ID uh, so as long as that's there uh, once you've been a, 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 you know given it you'll be you'll be in no problem at all um, so yeah basically let me th let me think now so yeah, so I've just added all these these channels. So if we look on the on this radio, you'll see that they tally up. So let me let me get it to, to sort of match up. Um, so yeah, we go. There we go. So we've got talk group nine. So obviously you can see talk group nine there. And then we've got unlink there. And then obviously we've got parrot. So they all match with there. And that's all you do is you just keep adding them. As I say, I'm not going to go on too much about it. I've done a full a full guide on how to program it, um, but it really is straightforward to do. So that that's basically covers the code plug side of it, which is is probably the most um, scary thing if you've never uh, been into DMR. Uh, if you don't understand it, when when you break it down in the simplest terms, it really isn't that's it, that that uh, nothing to worry about at all. Uh, and as I was saying, there's plenty of uh, support groups. I mean, I don't know if you're on Facebook, uh, but this is the Facebook Pi Star users. As I was saying on my um, hotspot, I use Pi Star, which is just the um, software that goes on the Raspberry Pi, completely free. There's loads of different hotspots. You might have heard of DV Mega, Open Spot RF. There's plenty and pl you know, there's lots of different types of uh, hotspot. So you don't just have, you know, you you you've got quite a good variety there. I would recommend Pi Star. I think it's it's easy to use. It's updated regularly, and it really is simple and works flawlessly. Um, so yeah, basically, once you've got this, if you need a, a support group on Facebook, this is one I can highly recommend. Um, if you had any issues with uh, with Pi Star, I'll put all the links in the description. So so don't worry, you're not going to have to go trawling for anything. Um, I use Brandmeister. Now you might be thinking, well, what's Brandmeister? Uh, that's the controller for the, for this. There's different DMR networks. I think one's called Phoenix, I think, and one's called Brandmeister. So Brandmeister, I think, is the best one. I'm, you know, personally speaking. Um, so this is basically um, the controller of all. Of, it's like a network. Well, it is a network. Um, and you can see here we've got repeaters, that's how many repeaters are connected. This is how many hotspots are connected. So we've got 9,589 people with their own personal hotspot. Uh, so it's absolutely fantastic. You can see my hotspot here. Um, obviously you can see it's off at the moment, obviously because it's off, I haven't plugged it in because we're doing this video. Um, so yeah, you just sign up for a free account here. This is all free as well. Um, and obviously, if, if you're wanting to listen to DMR without actually having um, to, to get to, to buy all the equipment, then you can go on here. It's called Hoseline. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. And this is basically um, monitoring. It's, it, it lets you monitor any talk groups. You can you can just listen in like you would if you were just 
uh, turning on your 2 and 70 FM radio and you was listening to the local net. It's the same principle, but it's just on a, obviously a lot bigger scale. Um, so obviously all these are what's the conversations that are going on and these all these digits are all the talk groups. Now some popular talk groups, uh, I found this website, where is it here? Here we go, found this website, I'll put the link in the description. And he's listed all the talk groups. I mean, if you look at this, you might be a bit overfaced, really. Um, but they're all valid, they're all, you know, you'll find one uh, that's right for you, whatever region, whatever country that's, that's specific for you. Um, but for me personally, some of the, the, the most popular ones that I use, um, I love listening to me Americans. I do a lot more listening than I do talking. Uh, and the most popular American talk group is, is got to be TAC 310. So talk group 310. Um, absolutely fantastic. It's like their local sort of, um, you know, rag tube type uh, group. And it's very active, obviously, in the American sort of time zone. So at that sort of times, it's going to be quite active on there. Now, if you're from the UK like me, then you might really want to know about UK2350, which is our UK calling channel, if you will. Um, and then usually what we do is we, we meet on 2350, and then we QSY to 2351, 2352, or 2353. Um, that's the sort of protocol with it, really. But most people just stay on the on the on the on the calling channel. You know, it's it, it, it's it's not really a strict system. Um, but that's that's kind of how we how we do it. Now the most busiest one that I I know of is got to be Worldwide 91. So it's just Talk Group 91, uh, and obviously it's worldwide. So it's it's it, you're never going to hear that quiet for more than a, a few minutes. Uh, that's what I was saying earlier that DMR is so accessible. It's so cheap to get into. The equipment obviously is not expensive. You know if you want to get into Fusion, although Fusion is very good, really is very good. But you're looking at a 300 pound radio to get into it and then obviously you've got to get um, somewhere like a, luckily i'm part of a, uh, a gateway service red rose repeater group i'll put a link in the description where me and wayne have got uh, two uh, yesu fusion gateways so one on 77s one on two meters and we're also doing a two meters analog voice repeater um, but if you're not close to anywhere that's got a fusion um, repeater with it being a Yesu system, they lock it down. So even though you can get access into with your hotspot into the Yesu um, YSX network, it's not direct. It's using reflectors and stuff. Um, so it's doable, but it's just a bit more not not quite as uh, polished. Whereas DMR, these hotspots are designed. It's like it's purpose. It's like it's purpose built uh, to work with a. It's, it's 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 ideal for that sort of setup. Um, you can use D-Star, so if you do have a hotspot, you know, you're not just wasting on DMR, you can use it with Fusion, P25, D-Star, etc. Um, so, absolutely fantastic. Um, so I'm just thinking what else to do. I'll have a quick look at my uh, website. This is where I did the review on the RT3S, uh, the written review. Uh, if we go down to the bottom, you can see um, there's my video um, review on it and here's the programming guide. The programming guide works for all DMR radios, not just the RT3S, so uh, have a good look there. Uh, here's the hotspot build, so you can have a good look at that as well. I did a video on this as well, uh, outlining how I built it and how to set it up, uh, but if you prefer the, writ the written version, here we go. Uh, here's the list of parts that you need. Um, I also do a lot of ham radio reviews as well, so click on the reviews there, you can see the MD380 which was a very popular um, DMR radio a couple of years ago, I mean really popular, it's quite probably one of the best, most uh, commonly known one, and you can probably get one of those second hand for 40 quid now, so uh, that's always something to look out for, and I've done the review on that there. Um, so there's the HD1 review, there's the RT84 we've just looked at and um, there's the RT3S so yeah absolutely great you know it, I, I highly recommend getting into DMR it's really really easy to get into and there's a lot of information online about it and I mean if I can help um, obviously send me a message uh, look me up on QRZ um, you know send me a leave a comment uh, it re I'll, I'll do my best to help as I say I'm not an expert at all it's just things I've picked up along the way and I've had people ask me that, that have said 
oh uh, Matt, I'm, I'm really don't think I can do this DMR. It's, it's, it's you know, you get some people say, oh, it's not real radio. That you know, obviously it's going through uh, the internet, which is fair enough. You know, um, that's that's fine. And then you get the other people, oh, it's too complicated for me, all this digital stuff. I just like to turn my me, me radio on and, and tune it about and, and do it the old way. And you can do that with DMR once it's programmed and set up. It's, it's really that straightforward. Tune your dial to whatever you want to listen to, key your mic and you're in. You're, that's it, you're done. Uh, and then you just uh, di use a disc, you have a disc, uh, let me speak, a, a disconnect command. So when you've finished when you're obviously on the talk group you can leave it on the talk group um, and obviously listen to it for as long as you want but when you want to disconnect and just be not connected to any um, you can basically put a disconnect so let me have a look here and you see there unlink so you just program something uh, you just have an unlink uh, channel so you just turn it to unlink key up and it would send a disconnect tone and then they, you would get something back to say that you've disconnected so it's really straightforward and there's lots and lots of information online uh, so you have nothing to worry about so uh, yeah dive straight in so thank you very much for watching my uh, video on the beginner's guide into uh, DMR I really appreciate you watching it and hopefully I've, I've made it a little bit easier for you to understand if you were struggling or if you already understand DMR, hopefully I've explained it right so leave uh, your comments if I've, I've made any errors please let me know and, uh, and then you know we can help the community out. As I say I'm not an expert, I, I've just sort of learned a bit as I've gone along. Um, I've, I've never been on HF radio in my life. <laughs> I've been licensed 10 years now and I, I, I just love digital modes. Uh, I've never been on D-Star. Uh, I've been on Fusion, Fusion's also very good, uh, but DMR is really, really cheap to get into and it's really busy and you'll never struggle for a contact. So it's my favourite mode personally and there's so, such a wide variety of radios out there so you, you're really not going to be stuck for a radio. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching, it really means a lot for me. All the, the, the likes that you give, all the comments you, you give me, I, I try and reply to everybody's comment. It really means a lot that you've watched and I, I really would appreciate a uh, subscribe if, you, if you're feeling generous enough. So uh, thank you, I've been M6CEB, you've been very kind to watch. Until the next time, 73.